But for this lesson, we're taking a look at price controls. Uh, so this is the government stepping in and saying uh, how much or how little uh, can be charged for a specific product. We're going to see what effects that has on a market. Uh, there are two types of price controls. Um, one is price ceilings, the other is price floors. Uh, so the price ceiling, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a legal limit on the top price you can charge for a good or service. So you can't go above that price, so that's why it's a ceiling. Um, now, even though it's a ceiling, when you look at it visually, it will be below equilibrium, which if you really think about it, makes sense. Um, because if it's below equilibrium, if you take a look at this graph here, if it's below equilibrium, it's effective because it can't get up to equilibrium since that's where the market wants to go. Um, so if it's put below equilibrium, it creates a shortage because the price is lower than equilibrium. We said that that's what that does. The quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So we end up with a shortage. Uh, now, if a price ceiling is put above equilibrium, so let me draw a line in here. If a price ceiling is put above equilibrium, well, then it's just not effective because it's saying the price can't go above whatever the ceiling is. Well, the market doesn't want to be above that price. It wants to be below that price. It wants to be at equilibrium. So if a price ceiling is put above equilibrium, it will have no effect and the price will remain equilibrium price. Now, what are the problems with price ceilings? Well, first of all, they're inefficient. It causes fewer uh, transactions to take place than would normally have taken place. Uh, you can see the quantity demanded, which will be, I mean, the quantity supplied, which will be the quantity sold in this case, um, is less than the equilibrium outcome. Uh, so that means it's inefficient. Uh, in terms that we'll get to later, it creates deadweight loss. Uh, so in other words, it creates that inefficiency. Um, basically, producers uh, also, when they look at this, they have no reason to improve quality uh, because people would, although people would pay more for a better product, uh, there's no incentive to do that because they're not able to get any more money from that product. Um, one of the best examples of this is um, uh, rent control uh, in major cities. And rent control is awesome for many reasons uh, for consumers, um, but when you get down to the, uh, the landlords, they have no reason to really upgrade the apartment because they can't charge any more for that apartment. Uh, this also creates black markets for certain goods. Uh, since there are shortages, people who are able to get their hands on it can then sell it for a higher price in a black market. Price floors are the opposite, just as you would assume. So this is when you have a lowest possible price for a good or service. Uh, this is meant to protect uh, producers because it's charging an artificially higher price. Uh, so if we look at the graph here, uh, if it is placed above equilibrium, it is effective um, because it's the lowest bound of the price. If it goes above equilibrium, like say here it's at $8, then our quantity supplied is greater than our quantity demanded. So we end up with a surplus. So here we have quantity supplied of eight, quantity demanded of two. Therefore, only two units of this good are being sold and we have a surplus of six. So what do we do with that surplus of six? Well, somebody has to buy it, otherwise it's not really beneficial for um, those businesses that are being protected. So the government typically has to come in and fix this. Uh, a good example of this is um, during the Great Depression, uh, in order to help out farmers, the government would buy up excess uh, corn because that would prop up the price. They put a price flow on it. They'd buy the excess corn and then they'd destroy it, which sounds wasteful. Um, but if they didn't destroy it, uh, then they would have then had to either give it out or sell it themselves, which would have flooded the market again and really just ended up with the same exact problem. Uh, so destroying it was sort of the only way to do it.
Um, now, if you put a price floor below equilibrium, as you see down here, put it here. Well, it says the price can't go below that price. Just like in price ceilings, um, the market doesn't want to be below that price, though. The market wants to be above that price. It wants to be at five dollars. It doesn't want to be down here at let's say three. So if you put a price floor below equilibrium, it won't be effective. The, the market already wants to be above that price. The issues uh, with price floors, once again, inefficient. You are having less transactions than you would have in the uh, market outcome. Um, the suppliers also give higher quality options to try to attract customers. Um, but customers don't really want those options. It's not a desire of theirs uh, to, to purchase those options. Um, now that might sound weird to you guys, but uh, it definitely happens. And sometimes you get options from different um, businesses that you don't really care about. Uh, my favorite example of this is um, Pizza Hut. Let's face it, if you go to Pizza Hut, there's only going to be like, you know, you, you, you don't really want a fancy pizza when you go to a place like that. Not knocking Pizza Hut, but you don't really want a fancy, um, you know, balsamic drizzle on your pizza at Pizza Hut. Uh, but a number of years ago, in order to try to attract new customers, they gave, I think it was something around 30 different options that you could put on your pizza. Most of them higher quality um, additions. And it bombed. It bombed terribly because consumers just didn't want those options. Um, now, once again, that wasn't caused by a price floor, but it it demonstrates the same sort of issue where people just didn't want the options. Uh, this also leaves room for illegal activities uh, for people selling things uh, at cheaper prices when they can, once again, circumventing uh, the law. So with all of these options, uh, issues, why do we have price controls? Why do the, the sometimes the government step in and do this? Well. Uh, in many cases, it's it's to um, to temporarily help out people. Um, it can be used to help out consumers in the in the case of a price ceiling, and help out producers in the case of a price floor. Uh, so it can help on a short term basis, uh, but it has to be in a short term basis. It can't be uh, forever. Uh, and the problem is that. It kind of sticks usually. Uh, so people who put in these price controls uh, think they're doing a temporary fix. But then people get used to that temporary fix and they want to hold on to it. Uh, so that's why you still have rent control apartments. Um, and that really hasn't fixed anything in those larger cities. Uh, that is why um, you still have subsidies now for uh, various agricultural products that don't need them. Uh, that's, you know. It weaned us off of the price controls, but it didn't wean us off of government intervention that really isn't necessary. Um, so uh, it, it's really a little realistic ideas of, of what's going on in the world and a low understanding of supply and demand, basic economics, uh, which hopefully you're all getting right now. And that's it for price controls.